Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel, Jesus A Coffee Conversations. If this is your very first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. If this is not your first time, welcome back. I hope that you all have had a great week and you are enjoying your weekend. I am feeling so much better. My cold has finally left. I am back to drinking my coffee. I went to Cracker Barrel this morning and I got a coffee to go after I was done with my meal. And I also have this cute flower in my hair. My mom went to Hawaii for about a week on vacation and brought me back a couple of souvenirs. And this is one and I love it. So today I am going to be talking to you about self-control. As always, I'm going to give you the definition first. But first, let me say, if you don't have your coffee, press that pause button. Go make you some and come on back. Get your pens, Bibles, and journals. All right, so the definition of self-control is the ability to control oneself, in particular one's emotions and desires, or the expression of them and one's behavior, especially in difficult situations. And some synonyms for self-control are self-discipline, restraint, and willpower. And I have a couple of scriptures here. I'm not going to read them. I'm going to tell you what they are. And then in your alone time with God, you can read them as well as some other scriptures that I don't mention. So the first one is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 13, Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2, and 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. And I have another scripture that I am going to read, and it is the NIV translation, and it is found in Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, and it reads, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. So that scripture is saying that you have got to be on guard for attacks from the enemy and that your spirit is willing. Your spirit is always willing to do what God's word says to do. But your flesh is weak. And so you have the constant war between the two. Your spirit wants to do what's right. Your flesh wants to do what it wants to do when it wants to do it. So you have to be on guard for the attacks of the enemy so that when temptations come, you're able to bypass those temptations with God's help and take the escape route that God provides with every temptation. With every temptation, God always provides a way of escape. But you have to recognize it and you have to take it. So what does self-control look like? And I have a couple of examples. So self-control can look like you not going back for seconds when you know that you are full. I don't know about you, but I love to eat. I am a huge foodie. I am Southern, so deep fried anything <laughs> is what I would eat. I have a huge sweet tooth. And eating is something that I struggle with. I had no self-control when it came to eating. I ate what I wanted to eat. I overate. And I really needed God to help me in that area. And I'm only 5'3". And I weighed, I believe, 183 pounds. And that's a lot of weight on a 5'3 inch frame. So I had to pray and ask God to help me get control over my eating. I had a food, a food addiction. Like, I love to eat. I ate all the time. And I prayed and I asked God to help me. And as always, he came through and I lost about 20 to 25 pounds. And I still have a little bit more to go, but that's a lot. This is a significant amount of weight loss. And I would just, I prayed and asked God to help me. So it was getting, making up my mind first. It starts in your mind. Like once you make your mind up about something, it makes it easier to follow through. So I got self-control when it came to my eating. I stuck to, you know, the grilled stuff, the fruits and the vegetables, and made sure I got my workouts in, drank my water, everything that you know you're supposed to do, but you need self-control and discipline to do it. So I have came, come a long way. 
And then you need self-control when it comes to sex, resisting the urge to have sex with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or whoever it is that you are not married to. Sex is only supposed to be between a husband and his wife or a wife and her husband. So you have to have self-control when it comes to sex because sex is so much more than physical. A lot of people think it's just the physical act. No, sex is also spiritual and emotional. And your body is a temple of God. Like God lives inside of you. So you cannot be out here sleeping around with all these random people and not think that there aren't going to be any consequences for it. Consequences might not happen, you know, right, right. I'm sorry, I can't get my words out. They might not happen right away, <laughs> but consequent, there are consequences. And I'm going to talk about that in another video, but you need self-control when it comes to resisting sets. And then you also need self-control when it comes to not going off on somebody. Somebody has pissed you off, like all the way off, that you are ready to rip their head off. You need self-control not to do that. And only God can give you that self-control. So you have to get real with yourself. You have to know what your weaknesses are. God knows what your weaknesses are. The devil knows what your weaknesses are and he will use those weaknesses against you. And you need to know what your weaknesses are. If you don't know what your weaknesses are, it's going to be hard for you to ask God for help because you don't know what you need help with. So the enemy studies you. The devil knows what your triggers what your triggers are. He knows what your weaknesses are. And he will use them against you. And if you don't have any clue what your triggers or weaknesses are, you're going to fall. And that's what the enemy wants. So you have to know what your weaknesses are. And you can pray and ask God to reveal them to you so that you can get control over them. And ask God to help you have self-control. God is the only one that can give you self-control. So you have to ask him to help you and you have to get real and honest if you know what your weaknesses are get real and honest with God about them even though he already knows you still have to communicate with him and you still have to tell him okay God I struggle with sets I need you to help me start saying no to sets help me start reserving my body for my spouse until our wedding night and he'll help you. But if you sit there and you act like you got it all together, God God doesn't bless fake. So if you're going to be fake, God is not going to bless that. And he can't work with that. It's not until you get real, raw, and honest with yourself and with him that he'll step in and he'll help you in the areas that you need help. So it starts with you first being honest with yourself and being honest with God in order for God to help you. So as a Christian, as somebody who is saved, why is self-control important? Self-control, the main reason that self-control is important as somebody who is saved is because you represent Jesus. You are a representation of Jesus. So if you're out here and you're acting crazy, you cussing people out when you want to cuss them out, you get in fights with whoever makes you mad and you go around fighting all the time, or you out here just doing what you want to do when you want to do it. People are watching. Whether you realize it or not, people are watching everything you do, especially if you say you saved. It's like you are under a microscope if you say that you're saved. And if you're out here acting a fool, it can make people not want to come to know Jesus because they're thinking this person says they know Jesus and they're saved, but they act worse than I do, and I don't even know Jesus. And because they're over here acting a fool, I don't want to know Jesus. If that's how I'm going to be acting, then I'm good. I don't, I don't need to know who Jesus is. So you just turn somebody away from coming to know Christ because you are not acting like Christ. Jesus has self-control. It takes a lot of self-control. Jesus has self-control. And we need to be like him. If he stood there before he got crucified and let people spit on him and beat him, that takes a lot of self-control. Like if some of us, if somebody put their hands on us, we 
we not going to stand there and take it. But Jesus stood there and took it and he took it for us. There is nothing that we go through that Jesus didn't go through and overcome. So we have to be like him because we represent him. All right. So those are all the things I have to say about self-control. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed, press that red button, subscribe to my channel, and continue telling others about my channel as well. I am winding it down to the last two fruits of the Spirit, and they are, looking at my notes here, I wrote them down. They are goodness and faithfulness, and I'm going to combine them in one video, and then that will be all the fruits of the Spirit. And of course, after next Saturday's video, I will be talking about other topics. It will be a variety of topics. It'll be topics um, about sets. It'll be about um, what's the difference between being a Christian and being saved and a whole lot more. So continue watching my channel every Saturday. If you want me to do videos throughout the week, like maybe every Thursday and every Saturday, leave me a comment. Let me know. And I will see you guys next week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and take care. Bye.